oftentimes when we think of counting, we think, oh my gosh, counting is so easy. It's just one, two, three, right? No, if you have spent any time teaching young kids, you know that one-to-one -one correspondence is something that a lot of times takes a long time for kids to really master. Some kids come in with one-to-one -one correspondence to maybe three, then larger numbers become much more of a challenge. So what is what even is one-to-one -one correspondence? One-to-one -one correspondence is the ability of a student to track the items they're, they're counting, saying one number for one object, which leads into the next step of remembering how many you said there were. A lot of times, kids come in and they have one-to-one -one correspondence to three or maybe to five, but then after that, they start to do something that I call the hover finger. So they'll count one, two, three, and then start going four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So they'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and they're just moving their finger all around because they know that's kind of what they should be doing, but don't really understand the concept of one number for one thing. They might also not yet know the number sequence and be able to count that high, but that's a different topic. They were talking about one-to-one -one correspondence and how to help your students really understand that concept in your math class. And also for reading, when you're reading one-to-one -one correspondence for words, very important. I like to teach some strategies that they can use to better track their counting. The move it strategy, the touching it strategy, and double checking your work. So the first one, moving it strategy. So I like to teach this one first because it's usually the most accurate, is moving objects away once you've counted. You, once you've counted them. So you start in a pile, pick it up and move it to another pile, and that's one, pick it up and move it again. Two, pick it, pick it up and move it again. Three, so that way they're really understanding that this pile is the pile that I've not counted, and this pile is the pile that I have counted. Because beyond the hover finger, there might also be students who miss things when they're counting or count things twice because they're not really tracking the things that they've counted yet. So that's a quick and easy way to make sure that they're tracking everything that they count. The next strategy is the touching it strategy. So usually I tell the I tell my students to use this strategy if they can't move the object that they're counting. So this might be fingers on your hands, one, two, three, four, five, or the pips or the dots on a die, one, two, three, four, five. There's some kids who prefer to touch things even that can be moved. And then you have to use your discretion moving it and touching it if it cannot be moved. Next thing I try to encourage my students to do is double check their work. And that can be for beyond counting, it can be for anything really, but I really make sure to try and instill in the kids that double checking, if you're not quite sure, is not a bad thing. In fact, that's something that we wanna be doing if we're unsure of what we did. And I, the way I like to make this fun is if they're playing some kind of partner game and one partner is the counter, the other partner is the double checker. So maybe if at morning meeting we are playing a game and we spin a number or roll a die and our number is six, one partner will be responsible for getting out six items and then the other partner will be responsible for double checking and they can switch that way. And that's a really great way to just have play in their math counting that doesn't really feel like work, it feels more like play. As often as I can, I try to make the things that we're doing feel like play so that the kids will be engaged and it's fun for them and not just something that the teacher wants them to do. So just to recap, the strategies were moving it, touch it, and double check it. Let me know if these help your students with their one-to-one -one correspondence. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel because next week's video is going to be some in, some hands-on activities and math centers that you can use in your classroom to practice one-to-one -one correspondence.